So the 716 crew and I had landed one of our first big jobs of 2024. We are filming a documentary for Dramamine. Yeah, I know. And it's gonna be a pretty fun one. Now, I can't say much more outside of that. I could give you a little bit of the scope of what we're kind of doing, but you know, I will come back much later to talk about the whole process behind the scenes. This was a very unique one for sure. And in case you don't know who in the world Saint 16 is or who I am, I'm Joshua Martin. I'm a filmmaker. I run this channel, Cine Dailies, but I'm also part of a production crew called Saint 16. We all used to work for a moment. Now we broke away. Yada, yada, yada. Now we're here doing all this sort of interesting commercial world stuff. So if you want to see more of our work, just go to this link here. The link is in the description, same16.com, and you can find all the finished projects that we have done up to this point. So yeah, I thought it would be a perfect time to show you all what's in my bag starting out this year in 2024. And so we're using my personal camera, the Marvel Super 35, which we'll get into. I got another camera from Cine Origin. Thank you again for supporting this project, y'all. You guys are fantastic. And some other brands that sent over some stuff to kind of help along as well. So before we jump right into this, I would love it if you like and subscribe and check out the links in the description. Most of the products that I mentioned will be there and it definitely helps this channel out. So let's do it. So something I want to bring to these what's in my bag videos because they can all get kind of repetitive, kind of the same. And I do enjoy seeing what other filmmakers have and what they're bringing. But I definitely wanted to talk about in this section before we get to the gear stuff is why would you choose certain gear for a particular project? And it all comes down to the scope. The scope meaning, well, those who follow my channel, you guys are pretty seasoned anyway. But those who don't know, the scope is what the overarching goal of the project is and what are you trying to accomplish? So that will kind of be your North Star and leading you to which gear that you need to find best for the job. Another thing that should be good practice outside of making sort of a mood board, we didn't really make boards for this project. As a team, we created a stylized rule book and that basically just gives us, again, a North Star as we're going through the story to make sure that our Imagery is matching with the tones, so the camera movements, focal lengths, color palettes, all that stuff. We kind of made this into this huge middle note board, and that allows us to make sure we're all on the same pace since we're not all together. And that's what we're going to kind of keep on pace with as the story unfolds. And we're going to try to stay as true to that because that will helps us make an overall language visually for the story that we're trying to tell. So those are the, I think, most important things that help you determine the gear that you want to use. You just want to sometimes just throw in the gear that you have. Might not always work, but if you have a way to control that gear in terms of how you want the story to be crafted visually, then that's the way to go, in my opinion. I mean, that's what a lot of filmmakers do anyway. So the nature of this documentary is gonna be heavily interview based. So about 80% of the film is gonna be interviews. And then the rest of it's gonna be like sort of this man in the street, talking head, so running gun type style. We're gonna be using my Mavo S35 Mark II. There's a plethora of reasons why this is a perfect camera for this. There is one drawback and I'll get to that a little bit later. Let's talk about the bag real quick. You guys already know I love Timba bags and I've been using uh, a lot of them over the years. The one I tend to travel with most that fits everything I need, uh, this is the Timba Rodi 18 inch. This is the bag that stays on me, that has the camera, lenses, and batteries, and so I'll be good to go if, just if I need that. I love Timba because they make high-end rugged camera bags, but they don't look like camera bags. It's a very good balance of practicality and stealthness, I guess you could say, and still maintain a good rugged feel for your camera gear to protect. That's the reason why I go with Tempa. I do have another bag. I'll kind of mention it a little bit later, but it's small enough. It fits on really small crafts because now I fly out of South Bend, but this can fit it there. Just squeezing in just a tad bit, a little tight, but pops in there just fine. My Super 35 camera is on me. That's the camera I'm going to be using here in New York. The build is efficient. If I wanted to really slim down, I just need one cable, the battery that goes on the back of the camera, my media and lens, and I'm out the door, ready to film. The colors are very neutral, easy to grade, very much like Ari. It has built-in XLR ports and really good preamps. However, we do have a sound person that's recording all the sound, but it doesn't hurt to have backup. So I'll be running a mic as well for scratch. Now I would prefer to have an EVF in this case for dock stuff, but my seven inch monitor from Kinefinity is just wonderful to use. It is a little glitchy with the touching, but 
all the physical buttons work it's bright and it just it works now this is not a feature of the camera but all my custom pieces from mid 49 i think it just really helps streamline this camera i can't wait to make more with them it's been really a joy doing that and this is my wooden camera side right side handle stop start trigger now one drawback with the kin infinity is this boot up time in a documentary setting if it's narrative it's fine but in this case switching batteries and powering down the camera can lose some time and lose some precious moments so i went ahead and purchased a hot swappable v-mount battery which swit makes it i'll put the name here i always forget it this is actually a really great solution it does make the rig a little bit longer especially if i have a transmitter on it but if i just have the battery plate the hot swap battery on the camera and then the battery on top of it it works just fine so basically what just happens is if the battery dies i have about two minutes to swap it out with a new battery easy <laughs> it keeps everything running and i can just keep going keep filming so i think that's a fantastic way to kind of work around it i wish it was a little shorter like a v-mount mini size it's a little tall but it's fine now i wanted to get the camera out the way but one thing i need to note i can't show the lenses right now that we're using they are zoom lenses they are from lawa but they're unreleased and i absolutely love them they're a perfect fit for what we're doing but i will mention it once they're available for release later on in March, I believe. So stick around for that. But I, yeah, I can't talk about the lenses right now, but I can talk about everything else. So let's do everything else. So starting over here, let's grab these batteries here. I like these obviously because you can travel with them. You know, I think TSA and just airports have gotten kind of strict on bigger batteries. So this is just under the weight or the voltage capacity for it. Small rig dissing these over to me, the VB99 Pros. And so I like them. I, I don't have any real gripes with them. Nice little build here. I think this is like a metal finish and a harder plastic here. Nice little grip. I wish it wasn't so glossy, <laughs> but uh, that's a really little thing. I guess the highlight here is a ton of charging and output ports here that you can use. I look forward to see if they have a bigger version of this, like a 150. Nice little interface here when you plug in stuff and gets like your charging options and how long charging is and all the different things you have plugged in. It gives you all of that screen on front, which is nice. And here's that button. You can check the voltage and whatnot. And then it has a D tap on this side too. So all of my batteries that I brought with me, they all charge with USB-C. These are just the Kinney bats, but all of them that I brought with me, so I don't have to bring like a clunky charger. I can just charge USB-C. So this will be the real test with them. I've used them just for a few shoots here and there. One shoot I filmed for four hours straight, just the camera running on my Marvel. This lasted the four hours. It died just as we finished. I had my DJI plugged into it, the transmitter, and then running the camera, and that's about it. Oh, and um, a uh, follow focus. So it lasted four hours with those two things. Um, attached to it. In terms of audio, this is my handy dandy uh, Sennheiser MK400. I'll probably run this into the camera just to get just decent scratch. This is a really solid mic. Yeah, and I will just have this in the bag if I need to have audio. And then this is how I mount my monitor with the speedball grip heads from Mid49. Love these. I made a whole video about these randomly, but these are just fantastic how they lock onto your devices without using any anti-twist pins. I use this friction base, so I just use this for my monitor so I can get into the positions that I need to. And that just lives in there. And then this is from a new company. I actually bought this. I pre-ordered this. This is called the Play Pro from Kelvin. Very excited. I'm probably just use it if we need it for, you know, who knows what. And we need certain effects or whatnot. So I can just have this in my bag just in case. Yeah, I have no real reason why I have it, but you never know if you need a little light. It has an option where you can kind of just magnetize it to something, you know, just stick just like the other ones. Not a lot of stuff up here, but I got some extra... DJI batteries in here for the monitor. I did bring that monitor here. I got some really cheap earphones, earbuds, so I can just listen to the scratch. We got more Fujifilm batteries. This is for the X-H2S, which you're looking on now. An extra SSD. This is a two terabyte for the camera. Here is just all the simple cables. SDI cable here, XLR thin cable and yeah that's it for this bag let's go over to the aks bag okay this is the timba 24 liter you guys have seen this as well this is the all kinds of stuff bag this is why i throw everything else that doesn't need to be on my person so are you already know i'm going to mention this already crd bad or cord bags 
This is how I organize all of the little bits and bolts. When I travel, this is my tool bag here. And it just literally just, that's how I organize stuff. All the way down to, I forgot to put a label on this, but my wireless follow focus. This is a backup for the Axune. I made the video for that too. The Axune is just like a, an attachment where if anything happens to my main monitor, I can just throw it on my phone and I'll be able to monitor it that way. Diopters, you never know if you need some macro shots. Gaff tape, more CRD bags. I need to start charging stuff. Really love this. I actually need to make a video about this. This is the Nisi C5. Sorry, C5 matte box. I like the case that it comes in too. Oh yeah, no, like I said, the DJI monitor. Rods, dead cat with this just in case. Manual follow focus, simple clamps in here too. Probably reorganize all of this. I almost forgot to give this bag an honorable mention like I said I was going to. Manfrotto sent me this guy here, their top loader bag. I don't even know the actual name. I'll definitely put it here. This is actually going to be my bag that I'm going to use in between the city because I want to keep my camera built out majority of the time. Now it's actually super rare that I kind of venture out from using Timba bags. Um, it's weird to say that, but yeah, this top loader is quite nice. It's like a mix, it's a hybrid of like a doctor's bag and then a sling bag as well. Well, most doctor's bags are sling bags. And what I really like is actually this top compartment here. It's actually pretty deep. It's a couple inches, maybe two inches or three. And then you can really pack in some other accessories in here, but it's like a hard, a hard top. So that's quite nice. And it's pretty rugged. It stays up pretty straight. And so inside of it, you have a bunch of other dividers in here. Um, I put the rest of them in here. And so when I put the, my camera in, I wanna be able to just put it in and strap it down. There's like a little strap that comes along with this, like this here. And this allows me to strap the camera in. And um, it's pretty straightforward, but it is built really nicely. I think the one thing that's a hindrance from this bag for me for using it for everyday stuff is that it has no wheels and so maybe they make an attachment later on because having this on my shoulder with all the lenses and stuff like that in here it's kind of a hassle it gets heavy and it's on you know my shoulder for the whole time that's why I like the Timber bags you have that same size this is a 21 inch I believe and so I have a 21 inch for my my Timba um, but um, I would like to use this a little bit more often in conjunction of what I use with my other bags. Uh, but yeah, definitely gonna be using this for this trip. My, my lenses, batteries, and main camera will live in here. So I can just have quick access, pop it open, ready to go. So thank you, Manfrotto, for sending this over. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do some honorable mentions. Uh, I did rent out a few other things that I really like to use when I go on shoots. So here we go. The first honorable mention I want to say is this tripod head here, the Miller Compass CX-8. I've used this tripod on about four different jobs last year. I absolutely love it and I need to purchase it. It's about three grand. Um, those who have seen my other tripod that I tend to show also, also is the uh, the K7 from iFootage, that's the tripod head with the carbon fiber legs. This is just like a next level version of that. I know a lot of people love the Seckler tripods with the, you know, one-handed stuff. Eh, they're okay in my opinion. I just really love this fluid head. So many stops. Um, this is a really precise fluid head. So it's worth the investment. I will be getting this hopefully this year. Um, definitely want to just mention that. Obviously my camera's up here, that's what I've been using but this is for much bigger rigs um, and I definitely want to uh, own one. Easy rig, definitely worth getting. My camera's gonna weigh about 20 pounds, so <laughs> worth saving my back on this trip when walking around the city. I'll, put, I'll probably put like a lens here or something up here, but okay, moving on. Part of the lighting setup for these interviews, one is something really simple I was gonna do like a standard book light. This is gonna be a modified book light. Shout out to my boy, Edward. 
talking through, you know, I was going to just do like a floppy, shooting into it with a scrim, but I didn't know how small some of these spaces are going to be in. We're going to be in people's homes. Though this is quite large, <laughs> this is just a parabolic umbrella, and uh, this is going to be our very simple book light because it essentially does the same thing. You have this Amaran, I have a 300, much more powerful than this one, but this Amaran is going to be shooting into here and then it's going to be diffused coming back with the outer layer. Let me just show you. Okay, that was a 60 inch umbrella. I have a smaller one with me that I got years ago. It's kind of janky, but it will do the job, I think. What I like about these Amarans, aside from the light storms, is that they actually have a slot here for an umbrella. So I can get it exactly where I need it. And then, put some, so sorry. Can that fit? Probably not. One second. Obviously, I did this wrong, but that's the idea. That's going to be like your book light. It's going to kind of replicate the same kind of softness and wrap that you want, and a little bit more of a nimble one light stand type thing. Just newer ways to do this, but this is the way I did it. I would do it differently next time with like rolling wheels and and whatnot. But that's it. That's all of my honorable mentions. <laughs> so. Yeah, if this was helpful, let me know in the comments below. And I can't wait to share what this project will be. It'll actually be done pretty soon. It's not gonna be waiting for like half the year. We gotta get this done by April. So can't wait to share that with you all and show more of the behind the scenes of how all this kind of went down. So yeah, thank you for your support. I'm gonna go eat. I'm hungry. Cool, all right, see you.